All right, hello everybody. This is my 2008 Ford Escape, the second generation of uh, Escape models. Um, and I, you've seen the videos of this in the past if you follow my channel, which I'm sure a lot of the people watching this video probably are not following my channel, but that's okay because this is still a very interesting and very informative video, hopefully. So I've done uh, various things to my car, you know, upgrade the radio, fix the lights in here, but there's always been that one thing that I've had that people for the most part can say, it's not that big of a deal. All you have to do is press a single button to get rid of it. But there's something that I, you know, that once you get accustomed to something, you just kind of wish it would go away. I'm sure anybody who's a second generation Ford Escape driver will know what that is. That's right, the tire pressure sensor fault monitor. Who knows where these start because a lot of the time it can't, it, it, a lot of the time it surprisingly is uh, because of something that's not the tire pressure sensor uh, monitor, such as a um, weird um, USB charger that most people have, but in this case, I've had this for a very, very long time. It's been a problem, and would you believe it, it's uh, at least another uh, one of my, mo at least one of my monitors still works, as in, you know, it was like 20 degrees outside one night, and it came up saying low tire pressure, so it's like, so at least I know one of them works, so uh, that's not the problem, but the problem is, is this stupid message, so if you're not aware, this message, it says this every time you start the car, and we'll continue to say that until you go down here. There's three buttons, info, set up, reset. You press reset, and it will go away, and it'll show you all the other information that the car will tell you, such as miles till E, your average mile per gallon. Uh, it's a, That's a real-time gauge. And then that's off, and then there's the, the two trips, trip A and B, and then back to that. So, how are we going to get rid of this? Well, you could take it to the Ford dealer where you could probably pay big bucks to get your tire pressure sensors redone, which I don't want to do because, you know, that costs some money, and I don't want to pay money to do that, especially when I don't put a lot of money into my car. Well, not necessarily, but I'm not going to pay money to get a little a stupid notification to go away. At least not a lot of money, and I've heard that people take it to Ford to ask if they could turn off that display, and they just won't do it. So, what are we going to do? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, and it only costs about $15. So one thing I have is a, what you're going to need is you're going to need an OBD2 scanner, not just any OBD2 scanner. This one is a Elm, I think it's 327 or Elm 237, I think it's the Elm 327. I bought this off Amazon, Prime included, um, and as you can see, it's got a little switch right here. Now this is one you want to get. If it doesn't have a switch, it's probably not going to be one you want to get. So this uh, it was going to plug into the OBD2 port, and here it's going to plug into USB. It came with a little CD full of various things, such as drivers that I didn't see that d didn't seem necessary and didn't work. Three different drivers, um, and also included a um, in, uh, it also included instructions on how to set it up for Bluetooth, even though this is not a Bluetooth uh, receiver. Well, I mean, it may be actually, I don't know, but I don't think it is. And it came with a lot of different software, a lot of it not having to do anything. It's funny is that all the software came with a license crack tool. So uh, the Chinese are being uh, little thieves. They're sending you software that has cracked stuff. Of course, it's on a pay, uh, little CD with a, a picture of a panda upset because that's what they all have when you get something from China. Well, this came from Amazon, like I said, with Prime included. But you know where it came from right before that. We're also going to need a laptop computer, unless you want to lug out your desktop computer. I mean, you could do that. I'm not telling you you can't do that. But, you know, so you're going to need a laptop computer. This was mine. Uh, don't have a CD drive, so I had to take that and uh, put it into my desktop computer and bring it over with the flash drive, which is uh, slightly irritating, but what are you going to do? All right, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this um, little scanner, and we're going to make sure, make sure the switch is set to... Um, Make sure the switch is set to, this just isn't working, make sure the switch is set to HS CAN before you do this, otherwise it will not work. Uh, you won't be able to connect to your car, at least the software we're going to be using. So first things first, I'm going to let's just turn this off. I'm, I think you could do it while it's on, but I'm not going to. And you're going to plug it into your little OBD2 port under here. I, let me, actually, let me show it to you real quick, just so people who don't know what their OBD2 port looks like. I'm sure there's people out there that don't know. Oh, hush. There's a way to change that chime. I, I would love to do it, but I don't think there is. All right, if we look under here, that is your OBD2 port right there. That little uh, plug-in thing right there, that's your OBD2 port, in case you didn't know. And it's only chiming because I have the keys in the ignition. All right. Oh, before anybody says anything, this is a little speck about the size of this right there. I tried to get off and it spread. 
So, uh, if anybody knows how to get rid of that, please let me know, because I've tried just about every chemical in the book, and it tried to work a little bit, but for the most part, it just keeps spreading. But anyways, so we're going to take this, and we're going to plug it in. Let's see, so make sure it's an HS can, whatever that means. I'm sure somebody knows. This cord is kind of annoying. This is As It Happens video, folks. All right, and you should get a, you should get lights because this is powered on all the time. And we're going to take the USB port and we're going to plug it into the computer. Now this is a really super tough USB port. I don't know why or a USB cable. See if it really mash it in there. Probably not good for my ports, but you know, oh well. Now the so it gave you like I said, it gave you several different software on that. Uh, I think the most three that you can actually use. None of them that I can actually get to work. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I tried installing the three different drivers that. It didn't actually tell me what the drivers were for. It told, I mean, it told me the actual model of the um, unit, but I can't actually find out what the model of my my uh, my OBD2 scanner is. It's just the Elm 327. So I don't know. <laughs> um, all I know is Windows 10 installed, a, a, uh, because this is a USB serial adapter is what it really is. Um, and it just worked. So, you know, props to Windows 10. I hate Windows 10, but that's, there's one thing I love about Windows 10. It's how easy it is to install drivers. Because Windows 7 just never had any good default drivers. But Windows 10 seems to find them all. All right, let's see here. What was I going to do? Oh, yeah, We're going to be using the program called Forescan. Now, this is not a uh, free so piece of software. But you can get a two-month free trial by going to their website. Um, I, a little word to the wise. You do have to sign up. For it and it does have to be approved. Uh, it took me a couple hours, and today's Sunday, um, to get approved on the forum where you actually get the license key. So you're not gonna be able to do this right away. If you download it, you're gonna have to wait a couple hours. So I would probably get that before you, your OBD2 scanner comes in, especially if you really want to get rid of this warning. All right. So yeah. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first open this for scan, and we're gonna click this little button down here, the connect button. And people are sending me emails like crazy. It tells you the thing on stuff, make sure the key ignition isn't on, so we're gonna have to do that. And there's our lovely morning. The HS uh, MS can switch is on HS 327, and the vehicle's not moving. Oh, I think we're pretty uh, well in that department, which is good. <laughs> All right, so press OK. And uh, if everything goes well, yep, the vehicle a connection to the vehicle has been established and it starts, you know, finding all the things about the vehicle. If you had it, you're switching the wrong mode, it would tell you cannot connect to the vehicle. And it's going to ask you this: Does your this vehicle this vehicle may contain MS CAN modules? Does your Elm adapter have an HS MS CAN switch? Yes, it does. Remember, that's that little switch. So we're going to press yes. Tell us, please, switch the switch to MS CAN. So we're going to do that down there. You can't see this, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to listen. Put your listening ears on. There you go. Hopefully, you heard that. All right. Press OK. To find some more things. And it'll allow you to set up a profile. I'm just going to select no. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we are going to go into this little message right here with or this, the configuration and programming window. Press that. And then it gives you a couple different modules to choose from. We're going to select the one at the bottom, at least for me, gem slash SJB. I'm going to click uh, the play button, run service procedure. All right, now here are some uh, different configurations we could do, um, such as remote keyless entry is enabled. I guess you could turn that off. Um, It'll. You could tell them what uh, you could tell uh, the car what to what the the what tire pressure it should look for to know that's empty. But we're not worried about any of those. We're worried about this one at the bottom right here. Tire pressure monitoring system enabled. All right, we're gonna click this. We could double click it. As a matter of fact, we don't have to press edit selected. But we're gonna go here to disabled. I know you can just feel it. We're getting closer to us being able to. Okay, you gotta press this check mark. We're you're getting we're getting closer. So that's good. Um, and then we're going to press right. Now watch this when I do this. It's probably going to ask me. Yes, it is. So I'm going to aim this over here, and then we're going to watch the magic happen. Oh! The message is gone. It tells me to please cycle the ignition off. We could just do that, but it's no longer there. Hey, look at that. 
Now the uh, little light doesn't come up at the top, which means it, it when it, when the car starts up. So that obviously means that it's not uh, checking for it anymore. So it's not officially saying, "Oh, you don't have a problem." It's just saying, "We're just not. We're just looking the other way," which is exactly what I want. But yes, we are no longer having the message, and we can I can see how many miles my car has worryingly <laughs> because I'm getting up to 150 thousand. But I've seen some of these cars with ooh, about a 300 thousand on them. Easy, my goodness. So. That's uh, the the procedure. It looks like you have a couple of different options if you wanted to mess with them. I probably wouldn't be messaging messing with too many of them. Um, you can if, if you want to. I mean, you know, what are you gonna what are you gonna mess with the auto unlock? What is auto unlock? I don't know. But either way, I mean, you know, you can mess with it all you want. See what you can uh, do better about your car because I'm certainly happy right now. But uh, yeah, I think that's just about it. Um, thank you very much for watching, and that'll be it.